Oh, lads, we're back. What's next? Made contact with all of the countries, which is incredible. Wait, why is there only three on recruit here? Oh, yes, I think there was a faceless mission there, and then one of them got killed. 16 out of 17. Only 37 in total. Start liberating, I'm going to turn down for now. I'm kind of putting a freeze on sending missions out. Just for the time being, I'm concerned about the invasion that's going to come from East Africa here. And I'm just waiting for, I think it's Majid the Specialist, to come out of Wounded. So I can send him in uh, for the facility destruction here in, East, uh, uh, in uh, New Arctic. We could liberate another country. That could also be interesting. Two liberations to do here. I mean, two pips are going to come off of here. Look, those liberation missions aren't going anywhere. And the doom clock is the only thing that I'm threatened by. And by doing these, click one, two. This takes one, two, three, four, five. And then another two for doing that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do. East Asia. Seven days for rebels. Six days. Uh, all advent soldiers have a chance to reanimate side zombies. I don't really care about that. It's not a particularly scary thing. Okay, Majid is back. West Asia and East Africa. Wow, almost up to 13 again in South Africa. That's nice. Right, uh, let's see. The lads are ready to be sent out. No, I'm going to have to wait for these guys to come back now. Although, sharpshooter, sharpshooter, haven advisor. Bond training. They'll be ready in 18 hours. That's the ranger and technical I want. Gunner and specialist is ready. Uh, just fast forward 18 hours, and then I think we can send Levin and Jackson. Eight AM. Uh, Hamilton recover from the wounds. Nine hours. Cool. Living in Jackson, I'll finish bonding. Ooh, who do we send in? W and Majid. Level three. That means I've got to wait another three days before I can send them out. But bond level three is so good. Do it. Do it. Do it. Gunner is infiltrating. Uh, so Bane doesn't actually have a gunner to bond to. But it is good that we at least have him available. Send him out at some point. And then, oh, Roberts is nine days. Stobby's back in three days. Klima needs to bond to Bane. Task Sergeant Klima. Honestly, I could send him and Bane out now. For this, um, for that haven, not a haven assault, what's it called again? Facility. Hmm. Now nah, let's wait for Majid and Stubby to get back. It is still a facility mission. Let's send, uh, Ooh, troop column to reduce strength. 
That's where, ooh, supply raid, even better. Only one day, curses. Ambush troops, 16 to 18. Six days, 18 hours. Did I do the... Wait, this is supply raid. Western Europe, isn't there a network tower mission available there? No, I still need to do end of their operations. So taking strength down to four would be great. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now this is a squad. Hmm. Facility is going to have to wait. Uh, Manzer can stay. I'm looking for Ulrich. That's Manzer. He can stay on advisory. Sidorov. Klima and actually that mission that ambushed troops could be a good option for Bane and Klima. This is Marquez, maybe we can send him out. I think I can get away with if it's like a six man squad. Four master sergeants and two lower level lads. Setting course for the Western European ward. And as ever, if we can send an, an odd number of troops, like five or seven, then the fifth or seventh can be the mech. Sidorov and Vitala. Vitala is gunnery sergeant. Blackwing's teammate is Ulrich. I think I actually want Ulrich on the facility mission because the ice grenade is so useful. Okay, so we'll open up with Sidorov and Vitala. And then we want Bane and Klima. Uh, 10 to 12. Ambush a troop column in an abandoned city. We need a ranger and a technical. Now Marquez is crap, but let's at least level him up as high as we can. Maybe he'll become less crap. I don't know. Then Peterson is not available. So in that case, we're going to take the red pair. 16 to 18 versus 6. That's quite easy. About 19 to 21 versus 7. But then, if I'm taking Bane and Nuke, are there any corporals that I can potentially justify taking? The answer is no. I mean, the spark will get a level up. Mayor and Murphy. I don't, I don't want to take a shinobi and assault on this mission. Do that. Okay. Uh, any chance of a spider suit being available? Excellent. Uh, hollow targeter is fine. Beam pistol is fine. Let's go with Talon rounds. A bit of extra XP there. When am I going to make the tier 3 grenade launchers? Elite auto, hair trigger. Yep, that's all good. Fire, frag, frag. I think the plasma rough, plasma grenades might be sitting on one of the grenade grenadiers here that are doing Haven Advisory. Nope. <laughs> They're being used. Hey, Commander. But building more is going to take uh, Illyrium cores, isn't it? No, I don't want to do that. Gas grenade is also Illyrium cores.
the dwarf. Deep taller. I said, maybe I do send Ulrich. Because Ulrich is available. And he's got the freeze grenade and the flash grenades. Because just a regular old frag. Not going to cut it. So then we send Marden and Ulrich. So that's better. Definitely Carapace. He's only got six base hit points. Hollow target of three. I think the hollow three is already out in the field on one of the sharpshooters. Medkit, Stasis, Talon. Fine. Uh, Eleven. Jackson. Jackson will hit Master Sergeant at some point pretty soon. Then we have Bane. And Klima. And the mech. Cool. Elite advance. Any elite scope by any chance? Nope. Hair trigger. Elite hair trigger. That's much better. Armor piercing on a gunner. No thanks. I want blue screen. Gremlin. Does it count as a weapon? Or does it count? It counts as a weapon. Interesting. Skulljack. Nano mid kit. Carrot base. Double explosive. Uh, combat stims to close in. Immunity from elements. Some hit points, that's good. Ah, really? So then, who do I take the plasma gun off of? Honestly, maybe Bane. I mean, 82 aim. Oh, no, but he's got a hell of bullets. Okay, Jackson, give the storm gun. Although with 82 aim, I want him doing direct fire. Uh, elite auto, advanced scope, advanced hair trigger. And I think the usual here. Needle. 50% chance to poison. But that's 100% chance for extra damage, so we'll take that. Basis. Right in. Does make her vulnerable to poison though. But we're pretty much quite good with the snakes. I don't worry about the snakes all that much. Klima can actually give himself, here you go, elemental ele resistance. That's nice. 19 to 21. Any chance we can squeeze out up to 100% with a, a couple suppressors? We need to find another three or four hours, and maybe we can do it. Now, nah, there's already suppressors on everybody. If I if I took air triggers off here and gave them suppressors, it's very close. Sixteen to eighteen, much easier. Let's do it. Okay. Operation Night Father, War Dragon, Nitro, Werewolf Priest, Bane Nuke, and Pin Dragon. What's he getting at his next ability? Ooh, holo targeting. Oh, but strike is so tempting. You can trigger the strike by placing the movement cursor, spark or dash move, both actions still trigger a strike against an adjacent target. No, but holo targeting Sentinel is put under pressure, just too good. Enemies revealed. Yeah, we'll take that. I like damage control here. 
This case here, it's going to be Hollow Targeting, Sentinel, Cylinder Pressure, Damage Control, Hunter Protocol. So disappointed I didn't get to do those UFOs. Just need battle scanners here. Did she make Task Sergeant? That's good. Any other recruiting? Now we got supply gathering and intel gathering and intel gathering. Oh wait, this is the liberated country. I need a stronger soldier here. A shinobi could also be quite good. No. We need more soldiers. Well, at the end of the month, we'll be buying three more. We're just going to keep buying soldiers. All three, whatever's in the barracks, regardless of what class they are. Jeez, 6 to 11. I forget how low the damage is on those coil rifles. They seem so badass for so long. But hey, we're in the super late game now. Fuck it, give him the Arashi, why not? Nobody available. 52 intel, so we have enough to boost two countries. I think I can keep spinning at Templar headquarters just to get my high-end lads back in action faster. Yeah, we go. I want Heath Ledger back. I want Roberts back. Roberts and Madassa. Avenger plotting new course. Seven days to rescue. Can't do that. No one's available. Ismail is available. She can't go straight into another bit of advisory. Uh, Gremlin 2. Skulljack. Nano med kit. Honestly, mine shield with 38 will. Attack vest, that'll do nicely on the Templar. Seven days for a facility lead. God, I want that. New Arctic recruitment. If I can pop this supply raid mission, I can't, only 60%. I feel like I can do 27 with this squad. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So quickly boost, do it, and then we can send that facility mission out. Sectoid, Elite Rocketeer, Codex, Longbow, Elite Berserker, Sector Pod, awesome. Elite Priest. That Sector Pod, um, how is that under infiltrated? 91%. That Sector Pod represents a hollow target of Mark III that we can build. We've built one so far, and we need to get up to at least four. It also won't be long before we spend most of the laboratory's time just um, grinding through corpses to make alloys.
Anytime you're ready, XCOM. There we go. The resistance got the jump on an advent troop transport moving through this area, and they've left the goods for us to salvage. The transport is still disabled, but it's likely we'll encounter hostile forces attempting to lock down the site. Secure the AO and seize whatever you can. Okay, neutralize all enemy targets. I'm not crazy about this setup. I don't have good high ground for my sniper. Ooh, I mustn't forget this is actually a revealed start. Darkness is my domain. As you order, Commander. <laughs> Holy shit. There's an alien patrol nearby. <laughs> Fucking hell. We really can't move very far. Uh, elite. Elite. Sector pod. Shield bearer. Priest. First sergeant. Elite. Centurion. This pod is less scary. Volk says I am to obey. And going to be easier to kill. In one turn. Muton, Muton, Berserker, Muton, Muton. <laughs> now. Placement of the ranger is super important. Roger that. Scanning. You really can't go anywhere without getting spotted. I have to pray that this pod walks away. Saturation fire. Doesn't really help unless Sarge was stealth. The 100% infiltration, I don't think, would have given problem. me stealth. For sure it doesn't. Covering now. Yeah, Brennigan needs good lines Go of sight on. to uh, launch rockets. Uh, mm -hmm. I suspect that this is going to get very, very Time spicy radar. very quickly. Moving to Overwatch. It's trouble time. Yes. Good luck, lads. Bloody hell. One of these two pods is going to walk into us, maybe both. And they path away. That gives us a little breathing room. very tempting to give Sarge stealth so that he can open up with saturation fire I will reposition. bear in mind that Baroto is going to get revealed now on this next turn okay, so it doesn't help now now we just have to wait no we're gonna get revealed now whether we like it or not how does that not reveal us moving to designated coordinates oh I won't trust the line of sight the saturation fire is one action Muton, Centurion, the Muton Elite at the back concerns me. Sure thing. How do I hit the most enemies here? That's three. Okay, so these three here. 
first want to destroy all their cover. And I do think the bunker buster is worth it here now. Because these mutons are fucking impossible to deal with when they're in cover. Hello, boys. This now potentially means that Sarge can take different options with saturation fire. Well, not really. At least those mutons now aren't in cover. Make sure we don't destroy any of our own cover or hit any of our own lads. Oh, almost killed. Um, Mad Doc will just have to pick these lads off as they run for cover. Oh, see, I forgot that Bunker Buster doesn't then work with Salvo. I was hoping to shoot afterwards. Let's move already. Remind me, uh, have I got airdrop here? No. So I do only have these ore grenades. I'm going to have to rely on Arnold to take out this mutant elite at the back. Frag out! Frag out! Frag out! Get the frag out! Get it out! Well, really? What? How does he not have... Oh, this rock is blocking line of sight. Can I order him? And he can still use double tap? I think that's how it works. I hope so. I did lose the steady weapon bonus. The mad dog should overwatch kill one, two, three fairly reliably. Eighty-four percent. Please don't miss. Great shot. <laughs> Now, I could choose to disable that muton. That means I've got to kill one more, and then Mad Doc has a pretty decent chance. I mean, one of these things... So that Centurion is the, is the least... This is the least dangerous enemy. I've just got to kill one thing so it doesn't use up Overwatch. The sector pod pod to the right could not walk into us now. It'd be amazing. These mutons don't have cover to scamper to, at least. Question is fine, we can live with that. So, because they don't have cover to run to. 18 mobility. Oh, that must have been a war cry. Oh, oh damn it, the grenade. Also cancels Danny's Overwatch. I can't believe I didn't think of that. Uh, like at least the hit point damage wasn't too bad. Danny took a little bit there. I'm gonna save the dual strikes for the harder to hit. Or for the bigger hit pull enemies. Combat protocol there is pretty tempting. But instead, no, I'm going to let Mad Doc shoot twice. And then we'll put him into Overwatch. That mutant elite is fucking hard to hit, man. Pretty sure Mad Doc has the best chance. Yeah, 72 is, is the best chance still. Unless Sarge needs to use Hail of Bullets. On my way. What did you expect? 
I didn't like the 72% chance there. Shoot, shoot. 62 there. I can probably take that out with a grenade. This is also both barrels decent option. I'll just use one barrel will be enough. 62 is pretty damn good actually. The next shot would be 82 for locked on. Best shot on he has, so we'll take that and he misses. It's good to know that there's a, high, there's a bit of high cover, um, height advantage there that Arnie can use. I can take this cheeky flank, I actually like that. The walk fire here with Mad Doc, I think, is my best option. I think stay where you are with Implacable. Volk says hello. And I got that wrong. I can't believe I didn't. I just kind of forgot about the bloody grenades these things can throw. Really silly. I, I want to give Mad Doc. Uh, improved overwatch. I just have a feeling this pod's going to walk into us. I just know it. We can hit that bullseye. The rest of the dominoes will fall like a house of cards. Check on the move. Also, oh, are you kidding? One square. It's always one square that... God damn it. Oh, double longbow, so all our cover is going to get destroyed. Ugh. Fucking kidding me. All I can hope is that those mechs won't act first. But then again, the heavy rocketeer will destroy cover as well. Codex is going to cost the AoE shit. How do I get the most out of Monty Python here? A longbow hack would be amazing. The other option is giving Overwatch to my Ranger. Hmm. I think that's a better option than giving Danny Overwatch because Tectoids can do psychic shit to him and a single grenade or a rocket or something. We'll just remove his overwatch anyway, and then it gets essentially wasted. Hmm. Fuck, we needed that. I took this one because it has one more hit point, although if I'd taken the other one, it would have flanked this heavy rock here, so that actually would have been better. Good, stupid AI. God, what a clutch hack. Cover still there? No, no cover now for... for... Uh, a side bomb, that's fine. We have a lot of autoloaders. He ran backwards, which suggests he's going to shoot at the mech. Clutch. Here we go. It's fucking bonkers how tight this map is. Wait, is the shield bearer and the sergeant not in the same pod as the sector pod? Because that's amazing if that's the case. Ooh, 10 active. God, and who's on fire now? Uh.
think where can I Icarus jump to for the biggest biggest effect? Skull mine there, but no, that's no good. Out of side bomb range. I have no good shots on Arnie and no good high cover to go to. Uh, height advantage to go to. This looks to be one disturbingly erotic day. Can't you ask a little more sexually? I can rocket and then blue move, which is tempting there. Or I can blue move and flamethrower. Which also isn't a bad option either. For this long bow, I might just stand here and grenade myself so that I hit the sick sectoid. Oh no, just walk up and shoot the rocketeer. Grab the loot though. Could be Illyrium cores. Oh, god damn it. Gotta put the fire out. On Sarge. And then Sarge didn't get hit by the side bomb, which is wonderful news. I can dual strike, just really help. This is my best bet. I feel like what I needed on this map was a more forgiving starting area. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, the Codex is going to be fire immune. How do I get the most out of a rocket? I mean, that's going to scatter. This will make the Codex split, which maybe might not be that bad. This at least kills the shield bearer. That first sergeant is still a problem. Uh, I can launch a grenade and then shoot. Thinking for my specialist second action, I might uh, command my ranger so that the ranger can reload, be commanded to have two actions, Icarus jump, and then be able to shoot twice from range. This I can give Arnie uh, a sharpshooter shot with. With that 84% there, that's good. I need dual strike this nerd, which doesn't really help. I could advance teamwork true me, which doesn't really help. Like Mad Doc needs to reload first. We're going to go. Then you command him. Then we look for the best place to Icarus jump to only there was high cover here I can hop to this high cover we're gonna uh, flank that dude as well I want to be in here or I have to have vision so I can't select there and yeah, that complicates things the mech is just going to have to continue <laughs> just absorbing hits, I suppose. That's the position. It flanks the sectoid, the elite rocketeer. That's even better high cover, though. Now, this is... to get this exactly right. I can shoot once and then overwatch. Of course. Of course there's a turret there. That will just outright fucking kill me. I'm 
I can blue move here, so if I can take a shot that gets me a kill, I can then scamper there myself. So that's 16 hit points, 11 hit points. I'm very worried about those 8 hit points. Very little, very, very little hit points. Uh, I think a dagger on the codex there is good. I am trusting you. What do we have left? Direct shot to kill this codex. Uh, <clears throat> that could be very good. Just need to kill as much as we can, as quick as we can. That's one less elite rocketeer. The codex is immune. Four to seven damage does hurt, but it isn't that bad. I find it very erotic. I hate to say, but that's my best option. And this Trumi has better shots. No, he doesn't. You have to use a grenade to kill that codex, which really sucks. Oh, that doesn't feel good at all. take the double tap just in case this misses question is did I use incoming that turn I did everyone has incoming available but instead of mm, take the regular shot that's a one in three that's a one in three not so useful I'm gonna leave double tap off because I'm concerned of the sector pod pod wandering in now Double tap there would have just been insurance against the first shot missing. That's fine, that should be pretty easily removed. No! I won't help! Yes, Danny, good lad. Just need to not get hit by that bloody turret. Mm. Turret does have vision on Danny now, but it shoots at who? Ow! 89. Jesus, why so high? It's in my head! My head! How can it be? Almost bloody killed my Reaper. We got some rockets uh, and in two turns. I think I need to destroy that turret with this mech and with Danny. Hmm, no, 18 hit points is difficult to do. Have a good option for that. He has a nice flank. That other sector pod group is going to be right there. I need to hang on to at least one rocket for that pod. That is less likely to reveal. Still hold my breath. Oh, scary. 73 only. 
And there's the miss. Belay that remark. Good. One in three is not bad. One in two chance of hitting. Can't get any closer. It would be nice to move forward and suppress that sergeant. I can't see him. Go on, Cruz. Come on, focus. Oh, damn it. So I keep playing so fucking badly. I could have had both of those shots amped up. It's a good idea. Targeting. I'm so bad at this fucking game. Hmm. Eight hit points is almost enough. Can't get a flank with true me. That I can move up here and take a flanking shot on the sectoid. At least this way I have oh, yeah, half cover from that entire pod off to the right. Come on, crit would be amazing. Mm. Sixty-nine is one hit point short. And then from here, I can walk fire to kill the sectoid commander, and then implacable up into this high cover. But if I don't need to, with this hitting, then I can use the ranger on the sergeant. Alternatively. do something else and scout just to see how close the other pot is two active seven remaining that's one two plus that five pod with the sector pod temptation for me here is just to heal up to get my hit points up five to nine six to nine now i can't actually scamper up there so i'm gonna force You're myself gonna to fine. need do this now just to overwatch maybe i can hit this this the sergeant if it moves overwatch. hopefully the sergeant just takes a shot at and either misses or kills the longbow because he can only see the longbow and baroto which means that the turret can only shoot at Baroto. Okay, so then Baroto does need to go stealth. Let's begin. I will go. Good. Turret finishes it off. Misses, nice. Gives me another chance then of destroying the first sergeant's cover. It won't though, will it? I'll just have to use hollow target. That destroys cover, awesome. And luckily, I can VPT double tap the super heavy. Got some pretty nasty wounds on this mission. Knife Walker is going to be out for a while. My life is in your hands. Our prize is secure. She gets revealed at the end, of, well, at the start of the next end of her turn. Now, she does have to be in cover. I need to do 18 damage. Between precision shot, 72% crit. I can't dead eye. 
I'll double tap. Hasta la vista, baby. Absolutely. Getting close enough to shoot the sergeant is actually scary because I'm going to those positions. Oh, this is a this is a nice bonus. It's just that final gigantic <laughs> pod with the sector pod in it. Here I come. Come get some. Overwatch. Well, how are you going to open that? All right. What kind of resources do we have to work with? We have one rocket and one grenade Hello, beautiful. and one more uh, Icarus jump. We are compromised. Dead. Overwatches are missing, but that's not surprising. I feel like disabling shots going to be the play on the sick. Pod. Woo, they don't take any shots. Oh fuck, I need to reload. No, I need to move forward and hollow target someone. I can't disable the sector pod now. 60% chance to hack it. I think that's a good bet. Uh, let's see a rocket there. Goes quite nicely. And you don't turn that down. That's obvious. Can't you ask a little more sexually? A hundred hit points. I don't think I'm gonna kill it this turn on the sector pod. I mean this does a bit of shred. Uh, if we've got advanced teamwork, we do. Okay, so I can launch the plasma grenade. Oh, uh, uh. Damage and shred there. And then I think I actually, I advanced, I advanced teamwork Arnie. So Arnie needs to move to get vision on the sector pod. He needs to reload needs to be given advanced teamwork and then command it to give him two actions so that he can disabling shot the sector pod. Big strike doesn't do much. I can hit for a nice big crit on some of these dudes. 15 hit points here, 80% crit. That's a nice hit. 18 to 24, 85% chance to do the extra damage there on the elite priest. Still no saturation fire. I do have dual strike. Can't even encyclic fire. Moving up and trying to get kills down on all those three could be quite good too. On my way. Dual strike on the sector pod, maybe. be so nice to be able to drop into high cover but i can't really thing is this doesn't matter with danny unless i kill the elite priest because the elite priest will just put him into stasis uh so when i said don't matter i was just thinking i was only thinking about his overwatch i 
get a bit closer here with Nightwalker, I can then reveal that pile putting me into high cover. Is this close enough to explode that cover? I don't know. My life is in your hands. Ah, oh, well, I can't overwatch anyway. I can only shoot twice. Dual strike, shoot and then dual strike. Uh, that is, unless Bloody Peasant has threat assessment, which he does. But then Mad Dog can use an action to reload and then overwatch. Ready to rock. But then Velour Fog's second action has to be the dual strike. There for 20. Six points of damage. Sixteen hit points though, I'll go for that one. sector pod only needs to be in vision of both of these two crush your enemies is it gonna work See them driven before you i don't they think it's gonna work of the women. advanced teamwork uh eight protocol so that my ranger can shoot again Get three overwatch shots. And then command Arnie. He can hopefully hit sector pod with a disabling shot. Oh. This should disable for four actions. We disabled a sector pod in a previous mission. But that was after it was frozen. And then it still took three actions afterwards. <laughs> so shut down four should mean it doesn't get to act on the next turn. Kill zone, 63%, 80, 93 and 88. I do like the kill zone. Or maybe a chain shot doesn't work very well. What about AOE suppression? I can't hit all three. Kill zone, better option. Lock it down. Can't hit the flamethrower. So dual strike on that mutant elite, I think, is my best bet. Um, can Danny do 16 hit points damage with the rupture? It would have to crit. Not super likely, is it? 53 only. If I hit this one, then Sarge can shoot him, him, and him. Just thinking, if I kill this one, then Danny is going to... Which one applies the aim malice? I don't know the one that gives the aim malice. Ooh, but Baroto could help here with a bit of damage. 85% to put him into stasis. At least he doesn't fuck up all of the overwatch shots then. 80% chance to outright kill, so it doesn't use. I like the shot here. Oh, beautiful. Doesn't even go into stasis. Okay, good. So now Danny can use his three overwatch shots on these guys. Volk says I am to obey. And he can crit because of who under pressure. 
There's a chance he can do the 16 points of damage on this one. Okay, but as long as Danny hits this shot, then there's a chance Danny can kill both of on Elite in Overwatch. It's not a high chance, but it is a chance. Of course, personal shield. Oh, God. Bullshit. Beautiful. Now, what happens here? Does he run and punch Danny? 16 plus personal shield. I can't do that much damage. I don't have crit. Mm. Thank goodness for Red Fog. Oh, that's clutch misses. But he's just going to drop a shield. It's fine. That isn't too difficult to deal with, especially considering he is uh, left himself in in uh, in a flanking position here to Danny. Six hit points. Oh, I can just zap him to death. Through me. The most I can get out of him is an advanced teamwork, I think. A little bit closer. Yeah, shooting the sector bot is his best bet. The blue fog needs to shoot the sector pod for a bit of shred. The most I can get out of him. Eddie 8 could get a higher chance if I get closer, which it does. The crit chance is 65 on the sector pod, so I'm trying to pick the right person to kill the shield bearer. Is that a 98% miss? 83 miss. A blessing, a blessing from the Lord. Do they share this? Pre shot action for the bond mate. And then he can dual strike again, I think. Uh, looks like it is shared between the two of them, which I suppose is fair enough. I think 13 more points of damage there. This does. 15 to 16. We'll take that. I go where I am needed. Nightwalker kills the shield bearer and then Danny finishes off the Newton. <laughs> that shouldn't happen. <laughs> Advanced teamwork so Trumi can point blank the shield bearer. Let's move already. This might be it. You want some more? Man, that was hard for now. <laughs> Twenty-three enemies, four wounded. That deserves a mission photo. We make more that we may live in peace. Now maybe we need to start selling calendars. How do you pick an MVP in that absolute shit show of a mission? That was brutal. At least the wound shouldn't be too bad. I mean, my Reaper's going to be out for a good while. Allow these dissidents to 
my range also took a hard hit. The victory today is a minor footnote in history. A small bump on the path of salvation the elders have set forth for us. So we got a nice few Muton Elite corpses there. I think we should maybe turn those into dragon rounds and experiment with the dragon rounds on the rangers. I mean, if you think that he basically then has three chances to have a 50 three 50 percent chances if he hits his overwatch shots to crowd control the enemy's hit you can even maybe make an argument for putting um, venom rounds or fire rounds on the gunner because imagine if you can hit like a rainbow pot of like 12 enemies and you apply poison to all of them or fire to all of them gotta be light him up and i like shredder Shredder is always good. Okay, 10 days he's out for. Trillarium cores, very nice. Elite corpses, three mutant elite corpses. Excellent. We'll get started right away, Commander. I'll send word when the project is complete. New orders, Commander? Yes, please. Hollow, uh, hollow target of three. Turn that sector pod corpse into a hollow three. Oh, it's Andromedon Rex. That's even better. Uh, Illyrium core. Oh, using the Illyrium cores. Shit. No. What am I missing to be able to do the grenade launcher level 3? Gremlin 3s is Sector Pod Rex. That's what it is. And that's worth spending Illyrium cores on. For, for Gremlin 3s, I think that's well worth it. Good lord, that was an hour and eight minutes. The time just flew by there. I think five is also going to make this easier. Very nice. Uh, 39 intel. In five days, we're getting two bars off there, so that's good. That's bought us more time there. Everyone's fully in Haven Advisory. I still think there's going to be an invasion any second. Look, South Africa is strength seven, so they can't launch an invasion from there. We'll have to survive an invasion from here. And then that buys us a bit of time. And then maybe I can keep the strength below eight in these two regions. Wondering. Strength 7, strength 4, strength 3. Radio relay, radio relay is 850, which I'll have quite easily in 10 days. I could just go have a fire sale of corpses at the black market to try to get 750 supplies. And start building that radio tower now. That I get battle man, uh, mental fortitude faster. But no, it isn't that worth it. Defense facility now operational. Did Commander, we've pushed our current power systems to the limit. We don't have any capacity to spare, which means we can't expand. That's exactly the amount of power we need. Bloody peasant, go straight. Oh yeah, combined arms. Yes, that puts him out for a while, twelve days. But that's so worth it. Combined arms being unbloody believable. Where's my side trooper? I think the side trooper is out in the field. Yeah, infiltrating. Okay, tough one. But overall, good mission. That means it's a high level, high strength enemy pod. Oof. We were very lucky that that sector pod walked away from us and we got to fight it at the end. Things got predictably spicy with the reveals. MVP has got to be Danny. He did an incredible amount of damage and then using the Icarus suit to jump behind enemy lines and shoot them in the ass. It's just awesome. Thanks for watching, friends. I'll see you tomorrow for a daily dose of Long War of the Chosen.